Recording in progress. Do you guys hear uh, the, the machine say that? Okay, that's cool. Okay. We'll give folks another minute to join. How is everybody doing? You're welcome to put your videos on. It's nice to see. Happy New Year, Sean. It's nice to see people's faces. Uh, we're starting out 2022. Maybe not quite as we had hoped, but that's okay. 1203, Nick, shall we get started? Let's do it. Okay, I am going to share, share my screen. Share screen. This guy. Hello, everybody. Can you see the Gab session there on my screen? Yeah, start slideshow. Is that, we good? Awesome, thanks. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This uh, Gab session is being recorded as they usually are um, and will be put on our YouTube channel later because we are that popular and people like to hear us talk more than once. Um, so we're gonna do a couple of, you know, just sort of an, an overview of some stuff um, about the club policy. And we'll give, uh, Nick will then come on and give an indoor meets update. Uh, James sends his regrets. He had a meeting that was scheduled, rescheduled twice and uh, just was in conflict with, with us. Here we are. So um, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat as we go along. Nick, maybe you can monitor the chat if there are things. Uh, just to be clear, we won't have a chance to, I would imagine, uh, respond to every single question that comes up. But as mentioned before, both Carmen and I are able and uh, um, certainly interested in uh, having individual Zooms with clubs if uh, club admins or, or coaches or what have you, um, if required to, to bring the uh, club policy requirements to fruition on an individual basis. So just to back up a bit, we wanna be very clear from the start. The club policy has been in the works since 2019 um, and has had a few, gosh, probably more revisions than those involved wanna talk about. But um, when we're looking at a provincial organization, there are so many, um, you know, nooks and crannies and individual situations that uh, we are trying to take into account all along the way. So it has had uh, a number of revisions along the way. It is a policy versus a bylaw um, or set of bylaws so that it does have the fluidity and so that the board of directors can affect changes on the policy as it comes to fruition and as we actually work with it. The reason the club policy has come into practice uh, is because we are a, uh, frankly, a branch of a national organization that requires the administration of their branches to be tighter than they have been. Um, we can no longer be the wild, wild west if ever it was perceived that we were such. We need to uh, tighten our administrative belts. And all of this is coming down from the, um, from the lens of safe sport and from the lens of um, legitimizing and making stronger our sport overall. So the club policy is not designed to be punitive it is not designed to, um, you know, uh, uh, put pressure or, uh, um, you know, stress out anybody <laughs> related uh, in the clubs. It is, in fact, designed uh, to, to come into alignment with dictates from national. Um, and so I just want to make sure we're all clear on that going into this. A lot of the clubs have um, already done their submissions, which is awesome, and we're so thankful. The JOT form to do your submissions is here on the slide, and, and uh, 
if it's not clickable, maybe Nick, you can put it in the chat if um, if 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 that's possible. If not, I'll it's on the website, and I can certainly email it out to people if required. So submissions are coming in and we're really thankful. As I mentioned in the email yesterday to the clubs, uh, if you are here um, and received it, if not, that's okay. What we mentioned was we really wanna get things rolling so that by the end of the indoor season, our clubs are really coming into compliance with the policy. That said, and running parallel to that, we know that um, registries in uh, Alberta are behind. We know that there's um, a little bit of a lapse there. Um, and so we acknowledge that, you know, your uh, Societies Act or your uh, registration or your annual return, maybe you've emailed uh, and you haven't received it yet. That's okay. Mm. Send us what you do have. Send us, uh, you know, the PDF of your submission. Uh, so that we know that it's coming, right? You can upload that so that we know that things are in process. Um, that said, I think uh, Carmen would agree and has been very thorough on uh, making sure the clubs understand the coach requirements uh, for the policy and what will be um, what the expectations are regarding certifications and require, um, regarding the level of coaching certifications based on the ages you're, you're uh, coaching. So, um, but again, if there's questions around that, we're happy to help. The directors uh, and operate, uh, operators, directors and operators, uh, liability insurance, We've had a couple of questions about that in the last uh, 48 hours. A few years ago, a couple of years ago anyway, our old insurance company this, um, uh, had DNO um, as part of the overall insurance. The new insurance company that we have and have had uh, since COVID no longer includes that in the package. However, they have um, allowed us to offer our um, clubs that are in good standing DNO insurance at a very reasonable price. Last year, I think it was 450 and we had COVID funding. We covered that cost. This year, I believe it'll be roughly the same. It comes due um, for April 1st. And so the, um, you know, I won't say the negotiations really because it's insurance. You don't have a lot of negotiating power, but the new cost will be coming to us and Nick will, will have that and we'll send that out. Um, it, you know, when we get it, probably closer to, to March. Oh, look, the chat's going crazy. Oh, may increase 10%. Directors and officers, that's what it is. Um, thanks, Lydia. So 10% uh, increase isn't that, isn't, uh, you know, going to break the bank too much. Um, but that's, that's um, what we can expect. So I am going to, oh yeah, one other thing I want to talk about. For the volunteer hours commitment, um, we acknowledge, we recognize that, it, that that's gonna be a lot for some clubs. And so if you can give us a, a plan um, of what you, you know, what your intention is to contribute voluntarily to, you know, the sport and to our community. The goal here is not, again, not to, uh, you know, penalize. The goal is to not have the same small group of clubs constantly, you know, carrying the sport. And so just, you know, the, the on the submission form, the opportunities there for you to uh, tell us what your plan is. And of course, we'll have a look at that and, um, and go from there. So I'm going to stop sharing. And um, at this point, I'll open it up to questions, bearing in mind, uh, hopefully there are more generalized questions versus very, very specific questions to your club uh, because those we can take offline and, uh, and answer specifically. Are there questions related to the uh, club policy in general? I should also say it is likely as we move into um, the implementation of this, it is likely that there will be uh, more edits coming along the way. The policy itself on our website is dated 
so that you can see every time there is an update. Um, in the URL, it's dated. I think the, the most recent was December 2nd, if, if, um, if I'm correct. So uh, it is possible that there will be more edits along the way. We'll see. Um, any questions? Feel free to put it in the chat. Feel free to unmute um, yourself. No questions. This is really awesome. Kind of weird. Um, okay, so uh, I will share my screen again, given that. Share screen. And yeah, hello. Okay, here we go. So we're going to move on to the indoor meets. Nick has some, uh, some information about the indoor meets. Over to you, Nick. Can you unshare your screen? Because I can't. Oh. I can't see my thing anymore. There, perfect. I'm scared. So um, the two main question, the two main meets that are upcoming, GBOs, is, is intended to be next, not this weekend, but next weekend. And um, the indoor games on the 4th, 5th, 6th, or the 5th, 6th. And as the there's a U of A update coming on the 14th, so that's right. But in my conversation with them, I do believe the intention is for our meet on the 4th, 5th, 6th to be normal or COVID normal. Um, and GBO still wants to host something. What will likely happen with that event is there won't be a Sunday. Um, so and it will be limited events. So. We can expect a little more information on that by, let's assume it'll be up by Monday. If I can get it up on Friday, I will. Um, but that's our timeline right now. So, you know, plan on something for GBO and plan on a AIG that's similar to our um, last chance was. I think that was, that kind of answered the question. So uh, was there anything else that anyone had regarding that? Is there, a, is there a sort of a general idea of how we're going to run AIG? Is it going to be little, little, little guys, provincials, relays, and masters? Or is it going to be, I mean, obviously COVID adjustments make things, the schedule. Uh, the schedule, I'm going to talk, I'm going to be talking to a little bit to um, Vernon as of Friday, once we have more information, like final information as to what we, we do. But intention is it's going to be, um combined events as it was before and we would should still cover all the age groups um if younger kids provincials has been there in the past i believe that's still a possibility so um i think we kind of have to operate like like we don't assume it's our last meet but like if if it could be we want to offer as many things as we can so gotcha, um gotcha. yeah yeah and then so. and then would so then masters would get moved and I'm just looking ahead at, but you know, for my older athletes is, is then they just put masters in with everybody with all the U16 uh, and older, put it all together as one provincial. Uh, so kind of yeah, thing. they've, they've Hopefully. done that before. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They've done that before. And I, I anticipate it'll be, it'll be similar. Um, does that answer your question, Sean? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. I'll jump to Isabel. Um, sorry. GBO is that meet on the 21, 22, 23. They, they're probably going to cancel the Sunday. There will probably be something on the Saturday and we will have more information later. The fourth, fifth, sixth, like the fifth, sixth, the Saturday, Sunday is our main part. Fourth is usually set up or, or one or two events. That's the Alberta indoor games. So I'm talking about two events. So the GBO one is, is next weekend. R1 is the fifth, sixth. Does that answer your question, Isabel? Okay. Um, and then um, we'll jump to Pete's question. I just, um, 
uh, responded to Pete a little bit. I think the goal of not having uh, is conflict of interest, right? If you're voting on a coach's contract, it's best not to have the coach uh, as the executive that would be voting on that. Uh, so, so short answer, yes, Pete, a coach could be on a board, but it shouldn't just be like three coaches that run everything. Otherwise, that's not really a board. You know, do you have a president, a, a finance person plus a coach? Well, then that's probably okay. It's just that it, from an oversight perspective, like a broader perspective is better. Someone who can kind of look to the interests of strictly the athletes and don't have a conflict. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm still not quite clear. So did you say yes or no, basically? I said yes, but like among other people. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, like the, the requirement was five. So if yeah. the coach is one of the five, it's okay. Yes. Okay, good. Yep, thank you. Any other questions? Dandy. Okay, we will move on to just a uh, save the date, please. We have um, March 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. So it should be easy to remember for those of you that um, celebrate St. Patrick's Day. That will be the day of our virtual awards ceremony. It is a Thursday night. Um, why a Thursday? Because from our understanding, a lot of uh, people don't necessarily train as late or as, as often on Thursdays and um, Saturdays are, are uh, booking up. So it'll be a Thursday, it'll be virtual. Uh, there's a committee struck to um, conclude the nominated um, awards, although most of them are not nominations based now moving forward with the, the new awards policy. Um, so Watch for more information on that because it'll be coming. Um, okay, anything else? Carmen, did you have anything you wanted to add related to uh, your upcoming coaching courses or anything? If not, we can wrap it up if there's no further questions. Um, not so much the, the upcoming courses, but just a requirement that as of 2022, uh, all coaches and uh, officials and uh, administrators and uh, all those people uh, needed to take their safe sport training. It's free, it's available in the locker, it's easy to do, and it must be done. So that is one of the uh, requirements for uh, uh, all uh, club coach members. So easy to hop on that. Please do so. I know there's been some questions, uh, but uh, if you, it, it, it's, yeah, you just go to the locker and uh, click on e-learning. Uh, choose uh, multi sports in the drop down menu and it'll pop up in the panel on the left hand side of the page and then away you go. Like I said, it's free, but it is mandatory. That's Thanks, it. Marvin. And something else again that came into effect in 2022 is that our criminal record checks are only online. Your club admins uh, have uh, access to invite coaches to the portal or administrators to the portal. It's $25. Again, this helps uh, tighten up the administration so that we're not receiving criminal record checks via email, snail mail, texts, uh, PDFs, JPEGs, you name it. So um, again, this allows for us to have our criminal record checks in one place. It's $25 every two years. That's $12.50 a year. Um, and if, if that is out of your financial purview, let me know. Um, I think that wraps up everything that we need to talk about. You are, of course, always welcome to email us. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're feeling a bit shy to ask a question now, uh, we're on the email all the time and happy to answer as we go along. Question. Hi, Sean. Hey, guys. Um, has the, like, last year there was glitches with the coaches' criminal record check? Like, I know all through, myself and the two coaches I had, none of them went through, but that yet were submitted by job form. And then, of course, Carmen's like, hey, you haven't done your stuff. And I'm like, what? And then, of course, everything had changed at that, pro at that time. And 
and just making sure that everything's working because um, it showed that I hadn't and had gone without a criminal record check for almost a year and yet it had been done like a year previous. So Carmen has uh, been going through um, every, you know, tracky and all of the um, cross-referencing the criminal record checks uh, to make sure that every that things are documented well on our master spreadsheet as well as on Tracky. That said, um, we do require criminal record checks every two years and we no longer accept them via the job form. We only accept them via the myback, uh, mybackcheck.com portal. So if Carmen tells you that we don't have a CRC on file. We legit do not have a CRC on file, even even with the job form. And sometimes that you know the older job form. Sometimes that's because the it, it's corrupted. We can't open the document um, as it comes up through job form or as as it's come through you know various security. Um, you know we have McAfee when we open things. Like sometimes they just don't they come up blank or we can't open them. Um, and so that's why we've gone this way, Sean. So I don't know if that answers your question. I'm sure Carmen can let you know if you're, um, if you're um, up to date or not, or I can. Yeah, I'm all good. I know the coaches have changed a little bit. So just making sure that, you know, that doesn't come up as, oh, haven't done all this, this, and this, and making sure everything goes through and, and we're progressing on our slow, very slow end. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to just point out too that uh, through that my back check, it often says that the CRC is good for I think like five or six years, and that might be their case. But for us at Athletics Alberta, they're only good for two years. All right, uh, so you're still going to have to do this every two years. And if that seems like a lot, just think of poor Ontario with all the people that they have. They have to submit a CRC every single year. So, uh, so every two years isn't too bad, uh, but yeah, don't go by what uh, my back check says in terms of how long it's valid for. We're only accepting it for two years. Yeah. And I just had a direct message suggesting that we, um, uh, that re, uh, repayment or refunds were made, um, reimbursements, I should say, were made for criminal record checks from other organizations. That's great if uh, the YMCA and the Legion have the funds with which to reimburse for criminal record checks. We certainly do not. And um, um, yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, I'd like to say thanks for letting us do the Lululemon shop from the volunteers for the uh, meet in, in November. It was a yeah. great um, uh, variety to choose from and the delivery was exceptionally fast. So thanks for that. You're welcome. We didn't know how it would go. I'm still dealing with some uh, deliveries that didn't make it. So. <laughs> okay, well, we I'm had glad no it worked for you, Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Is there anything else? Okay, folks, we'll wrap it up. And this very short Gab session will be on our YouTube channel, probably on Friday. Um, <laughs> we certainly do appreciate your time. Get us a, get at us via a phone or email if you have specific questions related to your clubs. Uh, we're happy to help and bring this to fruition so that we are administratively awesome. Okay, thanks everybody. See you again.